Today, we are going to analyze this frame using portal frame method. In this frame, there are two lateral point loads. In the point G, we have the load 40 kN and in the point D, we have the load 24 kN. Now, let us see the assumptions in the portal frame method. Point of contraflexure occurs at the middle of all of the members of the frame. For each story of the frame, the interior columns will take twice as much shear force as the exterior columns. In the top and bottom stories, let us name the center of the columns. I have named J, K, L. M, N and O. Let us split the frame into two parts from the center of the columns in the top story. Let us take the upper part. We know the assumption the shear force in an interior column is twice the shear force in an exterior column. Here we have only one interior column, Hachan. We have exterior columns GM and IO. Let us keep the shear force as P. We know that in the interior column the shear force will be twice. So in the interior column HN the shear force will be 2P. In the exterior columns GM and IO it will be P. Also we must know that the shear forces will be acting in the opposite direction of this load. That is why they are acting towards the left side. Now let us apply the rule. Sigma H is equal to 0 and find P. These three forces are acting towards the left side. So all of them will be negative. This load is acting towards the right side. So that will be positive. We can add these three. We will get minus 4p. We can take minus 4p on the other side. So that will become positive. Finally for p we are getting 10 kN. We have calculated p which is equal to 10 kN. So in the points m and o we will have the shear force as 10 kN. And in the point N, we will have the shear force 20 kN. We have calculated the shear forces just above the center of the columns GD, H E, and IF. Below the center of the columns, they will be acting in the opposite direction. So towards the right side. Now let us split the frame into two parts. From the center of the columns in the bottom story, let us take the upper part. We know that in the interior columns, we will have two times the shear force. Now let us apply the rule sigma h is equal to 0 and find P. These three forces are acting towards the left side. So all of them will be negative. These two forces are acting towards the right side. So both of them are positive. After the calculation, we are getting P which is equal to 16 kN. So in the point J and L, we will have the shear force as 16 kN. And in the point K, we will have 16 into 2. So 32 kN. In the bottom story, Above the center of the columns, we have calculated the shear forces. Below the center of the columns, they will be acting in the opposite directions. Now we are going to find the movements. The movements along the beams will be acting in the clockwise direction. You can see that the movements along the beams are acting in the clockwise direction. The movements along the columns will be acting in the anticlockwise direction. You can see that all of the movements along the columns are acting in the 
anticlockwise direction also we must know that the movements at the ends of each member will be same for example let us take the member gh in this member mgh and mhg will be same let us take the member gd in this member mgd and mdg will be same so in every member at the ends the movements will be same in the portal frame method we have one more advantage the movements in the beams in each stories will be same for example mgh mhg mhi and mih will be having the same value and the movements mde med mef and mfe will be having the same value now let us find the movements in the columns to find the movements we can use the formula wl upon 2 let us take the member gd in this member w is 10 L is 5. We know that MGD and MDG will be same. After the calculation for both of them, we are getting 25 kN meter. Let us take the member H. Here W is 20, L is 5. For both of them, we are getting 50 kN meter. Let us take the member IF. Here W is 10. L is 5. After the calculation, we are getting both of them, which are equal to 25 kN meter. Now let us take the member DA. Here W is 16. L is 2.5. After the calculation, we are getting both of them, which are equal to 20 kN meter. Now let us take the member EB. Here W is 32. L is 2.5. For them, we are getting 40 kN meter. Finally, let us take the member FC. Here W is 16. L is 2.5. For MCF and MFC, we are getting 20 kN meter. Now, let us find the movements in the beams. Let us take the joint G. in the joints the summation of the movements will be zero that means if this movement is 25 mgh also should be 25 but both of these movements will be acting in the opposite directions if mgh is 25 this movement this movement and this movement also will be 25 now let us find mde for that we have to add these two movements after adding we are getting 45 if mde is 45 this movement this movement and this movement also should be 45 so in this analysis we have calculated all of the movements we can write them indicating the directions we have calculated the shear forces in the columns now let us find them in the beams first let us take the member gh to find the shear force we have to add these two movements so 25 plus 25 and then divide by the length 4 when we do that we will get 12.5 now let us take the member hi here to find the shear force we have to add these two movements so 25 plus 25 and then divide by the length 8 when we do that we will get 6.25 now let us find the shear force in the member de for that we have to add these two movements so 45 plus 45 then we have to divide by the length 4 when we do that we will get 22.5 now let us take the member ef here we have to add these two movements so 45 plus 45 then we have to divide by the length 8 when we do that we will get 11.25
we have found the shear forces in all of the members using the shear forces we can find the axial forces the axial forces in the beams will be compressive let us assume that in the top and bottom stories in the first two columns the axial forces are tensile and in the last column the axial force is compressive first let us find these two axial forces for that we have to take the joint g in the joint g we have the members gh and gd we know that the points of contraflexure lies in the center so when we take the joint we should not take the whole member we have to select only half of the members when we take half of the members this shear force is acting upwards and this shear force is acting towards the left side let us keep the unknown axial force in the vertical direction as v and in the horizontal direction as h by applying sigma v is equal to 0 we can find v v is acting downwards so that will be negative this force is acting upwards so that will be positive finally for v we are getting 12.5 kN now let us apply the rule sigma h is equal to 0 and find out h this force is acting towards the right side so that will be positive this is acting towards the left side that will be negative h is also acting towards the left side so that is also negative finally for h we are getting 30 kN let us apply the axial forces we have calculated now let us take the joint h let us name the unknown vertical axial force as v and the horizontal force as h let us apply this rule that t is acting towards the right side so that will be positive 20 and h are acting towards the left side so both are negative finally we are getting h which is equal to 10 kN now let us apply this rule v is acting downwards so that will be negative this force is also acting downwards so that is also negative this force is acting upwards so that is positive finally for v we will get to minus 6.25 that means our assumed direction is incorrect v is acting upwards let us apply the values just before we got previously we have assumed this column is tensile but now we have found that it is compressive now let us take the joint i let us apply this rule and find v this force is acting downwards so that will be negative this is acting upwards so that will be positive finally for v we are getting 6.25 kN let us apply that now let us take the joint d let us apply this rule 10 and 24 are acting towards the right side so both are positive these two forces are acting towards the left side so both of them are negative finally for h we are getting 18 kN now let us apply this rule both of these forces are acting upwards so both of them are positive this is acting downwards so that is negative finally for v we are getting 35 kN let us apply the values just before we have got now let us take the joint e let us apply this rule 18 and 20 are acting towards the right side so both of them are positive these two forces are acting towards the left side so both of them are negative finally for h we are getting 6 kN now let us apply this rule these two forces are acting downwards so both of them are negative 
these two forces are acting upwards so both of them are positive finally for v we are getting 17.5 kN now let us take the joint f let us apply this rule and find v these two forces are acting downwards so both of them are negative v is acting upwards so that is positive finally for v we are getting 17.5 kN let us apply that we have calculated all of the axial forces now let us find the reactions in the fixed ends in the point A, the axial force is acting upwards, so the reaction should be acting downwards. In the point B and C, the axial force are acting downwards, so the reactions should be acting upwards. In the fixed ends, we have calculated the vertical reactions and the movements. Now, we are going to find the horizontal reactions. First, let us take the point A. This force is acting towards the right side. So, the reaction should be acting towards the left side. In the similar way, we can find Hb and Hc. Here, you can see the bending moment diagram for the columns. Here, the bending moment diagram for the beams. Here the shear force diagram for the beams. Here the shear force diagram for the columns. Now we are going to end this session. Thank you for watching this video.